people who commit cyberbullying and harassment are even more unwelcome than spammers and are given the same treatment. Sometimes the victim turns out to be the bully. It is not always easy to determine which is which, and the truth may come out much later. She got Ocean to unwittingly cyberbully Alyssa for her. He said Alyssa was stalking her, and she had a voicemail that made it sound pretty convincing. It was a voicemail sent from Alyssa in the heat of the moment, so it was something Alyssa should never have said or sent. But unfortunately, she did, and it was shown to me. And because I know what it's like to be contacted by people that I don't want contacting me, this hit a nerve. I had no intention of getting involved, but Amanda kept at me and kept at me. Alyssa's harassing me. Alyssa won't leave me alone. Alyssa this, Alyssa that, Alyssa this, Alyssa that. And finally, when she showed me that audio recording, then I was convinced that Alyssa was trouble, and I confronted her about it. That's how Amanda operates. She just keeps at you and keeps at you and tries to get you to harass people. The beautiful thing about this is it did not end up going Amanda's way. Ocean from 2019 does come at Alyssa with a heap of attitude at first, but this changes as the chat goes on. Present day, Ocean has the sport and honesty to own what 2019 Ocean says and give her a verbal slap upside the head. Here is the chat between Alyssa and Ocean 2019, with occasional comments from current time Ocean thrown in. If you want to role play, you'll find people more suited to your style on Quotev.com. Stop bothering Amanda. She's fed up to hear and back with you, and you're just going to have to face it like a woman and leave her alone. Alyssa, you were told to leave Amanda the heck alone. Take a freaking hint. She needs to quit slandering my name when she deletes my name off her voicemail. OGM, I will slander isn't cool. I don't do that to her. Who is this anyway? Who is this? This has nothing to do with slander. She simply does asterisk, not asterisk, want to role play or do anything with you. Grow up, be a woman about it, and move on. Stop calling her stop. Do you not understand the word stop? This has nothing to do with slander? Ocean, you idiot. Oh my gosh. Amanda manipulated both of us. She goaded Alyssa into an angry response. Then she went and showed that response to me and did this big victim act. Oh, I'm so scared. Alyssa's not leaving me alone. Oh, and I fell for it. And now I'm the one being cyberbullied by that same Amanda. I don't care about role play. I don't want to either. I just want to explain something to her in the nicest way possible. If she would give me the five minutes to explain, everything would be fine. And again, who is this? I'm trying to apologize for everything also. No, you don't need to explain anything. She doesn't want to hear from you ever again. Accept that and move on. And you may call me Ocean. I take that back, 2019 Ocean. You're not an idiot. You're a wench. I just want her to hear me out. And if she still doesn't want to talk, fine. I'm just trying to clear the air. Uh, life is too short to be holding grudges. That's all no harm in that. Don't give me some crap about holding grudges. Face facts. She's heard all she ever wants to hear from you. She's heard you out and heard more than enough. Suck it up and move on. Advising Alyssa to move on and forget about Amanda wasn't a bad idea. But Alyssa's correct. Amanda does carry grudges and she holds on to them for dear life. She doesn't let out and let go. She just spews and spews and spews years after the offense happened. And the offense can be pretty trivial too. For example, somebody not wanting to be on an email list with her because of her Star Wars obsession. No, she has a not everything. Yes, she asterisk has asterisk. Now cut this crap. Explain it to me if you want to, but leave her alone. Alyssa was correct again. Amanda hadn't told me everything. If I explain to you, will you tell her? Not without your permission, I won't. I might have been wary of Alyssa at that time, but I had no intention of causing any trouble for her, and that shows in that last statement. So 2020 Ocean actually did something right there. Okay, you can tell her. A while back, she recommended I be put on medication. Oh, that's Amanda for you. Always obsessing on Star Wars and meds, 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 meds. 
Pretty much anyone that she ever talked to that got acquainted with her would realize one of the first things about her is she takes meds. And she doesn't want to have to take her ADD meds because they dry out her throat and they, I forget what the other side effects are. She loved informing people about her various disabilities, her blindness, her CP, her osteopenia, her epilepsy, her attention deficit disorder, her obsessive compulsive disorder. I think I covered all of them, except for covert narcissism, which is something I'm pretty sure that she has. Although she hasn't been clinically diagnosed with that, she certainly has a lot of those traits. And I found out the hard way over four years of association with her. But this meds thing is probably a narcissist thing too. A lot of people in that toxic community that she came from and went back to seem to have narcissistic traits, including Maheen. She told Maheen that she took meds and he nagged at her and nagged at her all the time that she should take her meds. Then she would complain to me about how Maheen would nag at her to take her meds. Well, then you shouldn't have told him in the first place. And for her to tell someone else to go on meds when she so proudly says how she doesn't need her ADD meds. Oh, bull. She used to put the meds thing into her stupid role plays, too. Every time she brought home a new toy character, she would do this role play on the phone with me. And, oh, I was sick of it. She'd bring this new character. And she'd go, whoever it is would like to, to know about my meds and all that kind of stuff. And so then she'd go into this big thing about, and she'd expect me to help her explain that. And finally, I was like, look, okay, I'm sick of this. So I did a little role play thing myself. And I said, hey, characters, listen up. You guys can talk about Amanda's meds among yourselves. I don't want any part of it anymore. I'm sick of it. And she got new toys often. She would argue with her mom, who would fight and grumble, and eventually her mom would give in and help her to get a new toy. She'd bring the new toy home. She'd be all happy. But then her new toy would want to know, why does she take her all these meds? So then, oh, and it would be the same blasted stupid conversation every time she got a new toy every new toy wanted to know the same thing what are all these meds for why did she take all these meds oh so you can see why i got sick of it I, who is she when she acts so crazy to tell someone else to go on meds and i'm not just tossing the word crazy around i mean she did act crazy <laughs> Wow! <laughs> oh, wow! <laughs> Imagine having to put up with this crazy, exaggerated laughter over everything and over nothing, day in and day out, on calls and on WhatsApp messages. Try answering the phone to that laugh. No kidding. The phone will pick up, and she would already be cackling like that. At 4 a.m. She was bossy and arrogant and loud and obnoxious. Okay, so... She talked that way in WhatsApp group messages, FaceTime, whenever she thought she had something really important and really smart that would educate and edify all of humanity who would listen to her. There's many different reasons why one would wear a mask. Oh, gosh, Amanda. I never would have figured that out if you hadn't told me. <laughs> <laughs> she was out of control once she got onto something oh that would be it she wanted to dropbox she'd be wanting to dropbox 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 and of course star wars there was never an end to her star wars and cindy and i were emotionally trashed We'd gone through some devastating things in our life, and 
We couldn't handle Amanda's crap on top of it all. It was bad enough having to cope with her on WhatsApp messages. But FaceTime yet? We just couldn't do it anymore. So we stopped the FaceTimes for a while, and she just complained as if somebody cut off her right arm. She complained to me about, Cindy doesn't want to do FaceTime anymore. It's not fair. And I, will. I told her Cindy was stressed out. So I told her to wait because, after all, she punished Alyssa for a year and a half. And Cindy's FaceTime break, that was only a few weeks, and Amanda was just carrying on. So finally, when Cindy decided that we could try a FaceTime again, oh, Amanda went absolutely nuts. Listen to this. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank the good Lord. Oh, my gosh. Huzzah, huzzah, huzzah. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen to that. Oh, my gosh. I'm so happy. I feel like I could sing the hallelujah chorus right now. I really do. I literally want to just break into song. I literally want to just sing the hallelujah chorus. Oh, my gosh. Okay, calm down. And as for Alyssa's situation, whether she went on meds or not is really nobody's business. So I'm not going to reveal that part of the conversation. For myself also about everything. I'm sorry. I don't want to role play. I want to have a legitimate conversation. I think she has a right to know. <laughs> After you explain it to her, ask her to hear me out for at least five minutes to reiterate and three to think and decide whether or not to talk to me, please. If you want me to tell her, I'll do so on one condition. You never try to contact her again unless she initiates contact with you. Same condition applies if you rather I didn't relay the message. I didn't want to be relaying messages back and forth from the two of them to each other. I just wanted the conflict to be over. And... The best way I could think of was to tell Alyssa to never try to contact Amanda ever again. I had no intention of passing anything that she said on to Amanda. Please relay it. I want her to know, will you message me with what she says? Only if you never try to contact her again and you leave her alone for good. By that time, Amanda had repeated over and over to me how she was never, ever, ever going to talk to Alyssa again. So I thought she had the creepy crawlies the same way that I had when people contacted me who I wanted nothing to do with, so. But that wasn't the case. Amanda changed her mind a few years later, and the two of them supposedly reconciled, but Amanda treated her like crap. I just want to talk it out, then decide whether or not to talk. No, no talking it out with her. It's over, Alyssa. Over. Bottom line, do asterisk, not asterisk, contact her again. That's true. Sometimes it just gets to the point where... It's over, and it doesn't pay to try and hash anything more out. I'm saying after you explain it to her, and if she calls me, we'll talk it through. I'm just going to wait for her for at least three weeks, then I'll give up waiting. This way, three weeks gives her some time to think about calling me after she's heard the explanation. Good. I know. And I'm holding you to that. Three weeks. That's the limit. If she contacts you between now and July 21st, you two can work it out. If not, you do not ever contact her again. Tell her I'm being sincere. Yes, on the condition that you do not try to contact her. I won't. Off topic and with a side of sarcasm, LOL. Which ocean are you, Atlantic or Pacific, LOL? Good. <laughs> I'm the Urmila Ocean. Fictional ocean that annihilated Slender Man in a story I wrote. How do you know Amanda? We met on an email list. Cool. Yes. I met a bunch of other people around the same time because of my old friend Simon, who asked me to his list. She wasn't on that one, but... You know how surfing the net goes. Can you tell me about yourself, where you're from, age, etc.? I'm from... And I don't give my exact age until later, 
all when I get to know people better about me, happily single with a pet bunny, and I'm a musician, professional piano, and just starting out on harmonica. Interesting. I've always loved piano. It is a ton of fun to learn. Challenging, but worth it. I was never classically trained, but thanks to Amanda, she taught me a little bit of the right hand. You mentioned Amanda again in your last message about piano. It is now a day shy of three weeks until I tell you if what she says. Three weeks less a day. If she has not contacted you during this time, you will never bother her again. It does not matter what, if any information I have for you by the end is that period. The time is up, not next Monday, but the following Monday. No ifs, ands, buts, no exceptions. I was saying I, I learned a, a little bit of piano from her is all. If I can manage, I'll try to put a little sample of my playing in a voice music message. It won't be the whole piece, which is two, three minutes long. Okay, do that when you can. Sounds like it'll be cool. What piece is this? You are playing it beautifully. Nice job. Thanks. It's Rachmaninoff's Moment Musical Op 16, 4 in E minor, a favorite of mine. It took months to memorize from a slow tutorial on YouTube. Can you play Phantom of the Opera? I used to play a few numbers from that. I, I should get back at it again. All I ask of you is gorgeous. I also did Music of the Night and Angel of Music. Great score done by Andrew Lloyd Webber. I definitely agree. My favorite musical, though, is Les Mis, and I can do a mean prologue work song from that. Can you hear the people sing sing in the song of Angry Men? I'm blank on the rest. I like the music from Les Miserable, but the movie wasn't the best. Oh, that one is actually titled Can You Hear the People Sing? The one I'm referring to goes... Down, look down. Oh, okay. Yep, it's how the whole musical starts. What time is it where you are in? I should get back to On My Own again, another gorgeous song. I like the music and rant. And Wicked, too. I Want to Go Out Tonight is my favorite song other than Seasons of Love. Heh, my favorite music is Chopin's Etude Opus 2512, dubbed Ocean. From Wicked as long as you're mine, Alphabet and Fiery, Furio Asterisk. Hey, <laughs> cool. What time is it for you? It is 10.25 p.m. What time do you usually head to bed this way? I don't text you past a certain time. Oh, you don't need to worry about that. My body clock can't keep to a schedule, especially when I go through night owl periods of editing files, heavy piano practice, etc. If I can't answer you, I'll get back to you later when I can. My computer slash iPhone always alerts me when there are messages waiting. Are you sure I don't want to disturb you when you want to rest? I'm sure, but I will let you know if I need to rest. If I just have to go because something else has come up, I'll just not reply until later when I'm free. For example, if I have to suddenly dash out the door, I'll just shut my comp quickly and split. But if I want to sleep, I'll let you know I need to crash for a while. How's that? Okay, that'll work. Cool. So if we talk at some point after we get to know each other at, say, 3 a.m., that would be okay. I'm saying 3 a.m. for an example. Can I FaceTime you tomorrow? Yes. Yes, you may. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. What time would be best? Hmm, I really can't say. I don't have any plans for tomorrow, so let's leave it this way. If I'm available, I will answer. If not, I won't pick up. You won't be disturbing me either way, because when I'm not using my devices, I turn them off. How's 11 a.m.? That'll 9 a.m. for you. That's fine. 
And that concludes Alyssa and Ocean's text chat, but it started their friendship. Alyssa once told Ocean how Amanda dominated the role-playing they did, always insisting on doing Star Wars, playing Anakin slash Darth Vader, making Alyssa play his mother, and having her call Amanda, Annie. Four years after Alyssa and Ocean had this text chat, Amanda tossed them along with Cindy away for Star Wars. Before doing that, she tried all kinds of manipulations to get the other three to lift their veto on Star Wars in their chats. She even tried to coerce Ocean by saying she was thinking of ditching Christianity, all because Ocean would not allow her to do Star Wars in her chats and deprived her of FaceTime chats. But Ocean says she used to believe they were sisters in Christ, not sisters in Star Wars.